So there, there'll probably come a time, uh, and maybe there never will come a time, but there, there may come a time when we set our church service at a time where it's irretractable and we have enough, we have, we have more than too many people to call and change time or whatever, but we're not at that place now. And so we're not going to, we're not going to stress about it. Um, Pastor Mark has asked, uh, I had a miscommunication. I thought that he was hoping we could start at 11 o'clock and it was actually 1130. Um, so we're going to, hopefully you guys have thought about that. We're going to take a vote. Uh, as to whether you would uh, like to start at 11. If we start at 11, Pastor Mark has assured me it's fine. He'll just he'll just get here maybe 15 minutes late. Not a big deal. Um, and usually I, I take more than enough time in prayer to cover that. But if we start at 11.30, that'll allow him to get here and, and settle in and, and, and do the things he needs to do. And, uh, yeah. The start at 8 in the morning? Yeah. Hot I'm just kidding. Calm <laughs> down. <laughs> This is Pastor Baca's uh, last last uh, service with us. Um, he looks healthy. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peace be with you, brother. Uh, may may your soul rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, uh, brother Baca and 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 family are going to be moving to Victorville, California, mm -hmm. and so this will be his last service with us. As a as a regular uh, member of the church, but uh, I have a feeling that we'll be visiting, and if the Lord is willing, uh, uh, more to come. Amen. Amen. More to come. Uh, it's hot over there, and it's here. So I said that to say this: any suggestions or comments he has about the the the, the, the future time of our church, just disregardable. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, so, what's on the table for the vote is uh, 11 a.m., which we're which 11 30, we, which we just pushed, or 11 30. So, uh, all in favor of changing to 11 30? Just do it. Yeah, but your vote don't count. I know it doesn't really count. Then we just cover that. <laughs> and uh, well, it looks like we have enough. So we're going to start church at 11 30. Let those who are affected know, and uh, those that that uh, you know. Um, We'll just try and keep it short and, and sweet and, and stay close to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Is there any prayer requests at this time? Sister? Yeah. Oh, for Ronald. Yes. Amen. Pray for Brother Ronald that the, that the Lord, that he'll be able to stay close to God and uh, Amen. be able to stay close to the Word of God and, 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 and in prayer. Amen. Also pray for, he, he's going to be going before the courts and just pray that God will have mercy on him. And that he'll be able to get through this uh, and, 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 and have his uh, have his life intact, not have this mess up his life, which the prison system seems to be very able to do. Amen. Uh, did you have any other prayer requests, sister? Yeah, for my brother's traveling mercy. Yes. Family, family, family. Let's let's not to, let's not forget to pray for when uh, brother Baca, uh, his son is very ill. Chris Baca, pray for him. Um, uh, and just pray for for traveling mercies, and that and that God would charge His angels uh, about about this family. Amen. Amen. And for family. And for family. Amen. 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 Uh, Sister Lisa. Um. First, I got a praise report. Um. I got a really nice surprise earlier this week. My daughter came to visit me for a day. Her and her girlfriend so that was a nice surprise I was off Monday and then we went to surprise her brother out at the caverns and pastor came over to you know talk with my daughter and her girlfriend and, and he prayed for them and I think talking to them and knowing that there are religious people out there that are not against homosexuals make them believe more and have more faith because I've been talking back and forth with my daughter this week, and she's been praying more and having more faith. So you've really impacted them in a positive way. Well, that's a, that, that was my good pleasure. And yeah. just, look, brothers and sisters, what this all boils down to, you want to take everything that we're trying to do, is we are just trying to get religious Christians who have, who, have a lot of, who have a lot of beliefs. We have a lot of beliefs. We have some strong biblical beliefs about these subjects. But that we would be able to, to check those beliefs 
so that love can go in front of them. Amen. And what we're really hoping for is that that, that that will come out of this is that we will be able to make that introduction to people that would normally never talk to God. We want we want homosexuals to talk to God. Amen. We do. I do. I want them. I want. I want. I want no people who are sitting. No. Yeah. There's. There's no. There is no difference in, in 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 sin here. We want everyone talking to God and letting God deal with them on His terms, and not mine. Amen. Not not the terms we set for them, but the terms that God sets for them. Amen. We can do that. Uh, the kingdom of God will come. Surely, it will come sooner than later. Amen. So, with that said, um, she had a a job the last of the day and she's prayed about it and she felt like it wasn't for her because you know her back it was standing all day no breaks no sitting down yeah. so um just prayer for erica and her girlfriend nydia nydia yeah and you know as we, and i gotta tell you sister when, when i was sitting there i don't i don't have discernment like discernment like many have very like my wife has very strong discernment uh, the ladies in your family very strong discernment I, I usually have a, a pretty good uh, uh, for conviction. I, I have a I have a, a discernment for conviction, and I can feel while talking to her about her family's past. And I I, I think there was a little bit of fear there because the Lord was the Lord was blessing me uh, that day. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just I'm just a fool. But I was able to tell her things about her past that she'd never mentioned to me. I didn't know, uh, and that was that was the Lord because I think He really. You know when he when he met the woman at the well, the, the the woman at the well had had been with five other men, and the man that she was with then wasn't even. And the Lord told her all about her sins, but He never told her about hell. He never told her that she was evil. He never told her she was a sinner. He told her about her sins because He wanted her to know that He loves her right where she's at, mm -hmm. and that He's willing. He's willing to bypass so much stuff that He shouldn't bypass, like talking to a Gentile, like talking to a woman, like. Like like serving a woman, that's awful back then. And he tells her, all I would like you to do is ask me for water, and I would serve you that water, and that water would, would, would spring up into everlasting life. This is an indication in how we are supposed to treat people that are sinning. Amen. We, we just bypass all the garbage that we normally want to say to fix them and just love them, and let, and let love fix them. Amen. Yeah. Okay. And for my husband, he's been sick all week, and the doctor's at that emergency room. That doctor almost killed him again. Oh, no. Putting him on the wrong medicine and making him worse. And thank God he listened to himself because he would have been back where he was a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's yeah, that was that's bad. Bad, bad, bad. So he's doing good though. Okay, good. Amen. 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 Any other prayer requests? Brother Martinez, uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I see you right here. Uh, my niece, uh, April, she uh, has cancer, and uh, and my nephew's wife, Iris, uh, she uh, had surgery done on her eye. She had a, a tumor. Uh huh. Tumor. A tumor, and they took it out and everything, but it was a real long operation, and and I guess they didn't get it all. I'm not, I'm not very sure, but but. It came back again, and they have to go back into that eye again, and they want to do it next, so uh, the 15th. Okay. Because uh, she might lose that eye if they don't go right sooner. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, Brother JR. Well, um, for our troops, of course, for our government, bring our troops home. Amen. And I want to thank everybody for praying for me and bringing Cameron home. Amen. Amen. For those of you that don't know, uh, uh, our little brother Cameron decided to go on a, we'll call it a, a, a field trip with his grandparents and didn't let anybody know. And the grandparents didn't let anybody know. And so we had just about everybody we could out there uh, just looking for him and had the authorities involved but he's home and he's never going to do that again is he? <laughs> no sir because we've got all kinds of tricks as adults which we can bestow pain and punishment <laughs> yeah. like like uh owning like at our house it's you get out of line give me the hard drive 
Give me the hard drive, give me the hard drive now. Give me the controllers, the wires, the games, give it all to me. I want it all. <laughs> and, uh, and it's funny how, you know, electronics, my wife and I have found, electronics with these kids can be detrimental. They don't want to listen to you. They want to focus on the electronics. But there's one good thing about the electronics. You unplug them things and man, do they line up. It's, it's better than a whooping. It's better than getting grounded. It's better than anything, man. You just give me the electronics. And so uh, we, might, we, we might become a little bit more uh, liberal in our, uh, in, in, in our uh, commandeering such devices. <laughs> so, but I'm very thankful, Brother JR. And uh, I think that you took the right steps and that you were very, uh, for the most part, you were very uh, cool and calm and, and, and collected. Amen. So I'm glad that you're home, Brother Cameron. Any other prayer requests? None? Please pray for my wife, Rachel. Um, yeah. She's going to be seeing the doctor in a couple of weeks, a couple of Mondays from now. And it's, uh, you know, basically most of the stuff that he put her on and the regimens just have not been working uh, mm -hmm. as prescribed. They're just not working. They're not doing what they're supposed to. And so here's where we're at, brothers and sisters. And pray with us for, for wisdom and for knowledge. But we, we are, we're going to ask him if it seems right to go ahead and take the kidney and the ureter out, the left kidney and left ureter out, if, if he's willing to do that. And uh, Because we can continue to play this game, uh, but the infections and, and, and the antibiotics, it's a, it's a terrible cycle to be in. And it has gotten out of control several times in this last year. My wife has been completely resilient to any and all antibiotics for several days in a row, and it's a very dangerous place to be, especially when you have infections on board. So let's pray for my wife, and pray that God will give us wisdom, and also for this doctor, that if it's not the right <coughs> path, that he would be able to help us ex help explain to us why it's not right, and, and help us to understand that we really feel like the Lord is, 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 uh, is, has been bringing us to this direction. Amen. Any other prayer requests, Brother Nathaniel? My friend Alyssa, so she has full recovery from her surgery. Yes, Alyssa surgery. Praise the Lord. And once again, I'd like you I'd like to remind you to pray for Brother Bach and his family, uh, their endeavor, their move. Um, they're stepping out on faith uh, and, and hoping that the water will hold. And I believe that it will. And I believe that the Lord has good things in store for you, brother. Amen. Uh, repeat this first part after me. You know what? First, uh, does anybody have any unspoken requests? You know, there, the, the Bible says this about unspoken requests, that the Holy Ghost will make groanings and intercessory prayer for you, in right. which you don't even know that you're praying. Right. You don't even know that you needed to pray for that. And, 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 and God takes time to pray with you and for you and through you that you might receive the blessings you didn't even know you needed. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the good Word of God. So repeat this first part after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I love you, God. I love you, God. With all my heart. With all my heart. With all my soul. With all my soul. With all my mind. With all my mind. And with all my might. And with all my might. Lord God Almighty, I pray that you bless each and every person here today as your spirit descends upon us, Lord God Almighty, like that beautiful dove. I pray that it would fill our hearts and our homes and our houses with joy and with love and with mercy to everyone around us, God. God bless. Bless my brother Ronald. Give him strength, security, charge your angels about him. Keep him safe in prison, God, in Jesus' name. I pray that the judges and that the lawyers and that this system would have mercy on him, God. God, I pray that you bless my brother Baca with wisdom and guidance, Lord. That you give him direction and safety, Lord. Give him traveling mercies, Lord. And I pray that doors would open up that would not normally open, but that you would show your favorability on my brother, God. Please remember my sister Erica, Lord. I pray that you give her a job in which would be conducive to her back injuries, God, and for her girlfriend, Nydia, Lord. I pray that you bless these two girls, these two women, that you help them to get close to you, that you help them to pray, and that you help them, Lord God Almighty, to listen to you in those prayers, God. And for my sister Lisa's husband, I pray that you give him healing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I pray for my brother Martinez, Lord, and for my sister Martinez, that you'd bless them, that you'd strengthen them and encourage them, Lord. Please remember Abel, his niece. She's got cancer, Lord. I know they have several people in their family that have cancer. I pray that you give them healing in the name of Jesus. And for Iris, Lord, she's going in to have surgery on her eye again on the 15th. I pray that you bless those doctors. Help them to get every bit of that tumor, Lord. Help her to retain her eyesight, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we need our troops and our government, Lord. I pray that, 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 that you keep them safe and that you give them your will. I pray that you bring our sons and our daughters home from the theater of war, Lord. It is time for this war to end. I pray that you bless it to be so, God. I pray that you heal my wife, Rachel, in Jesus' name. That you give us wisdom and knowledge, Lord. That you help us to see things we wouldn't normally see. And to understand things that we wouldn't normally understand. And for this little Alyssa, Lord, I pray that you give her complete and total recovery of her surgery. And God, I pray that you bless each and every unspoken prayer request. That, Lord God Almighty, that your kingdom would be responsive, Lord, to the faith of your children. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, I give to you the glory and the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's okay to... Uh, you just go on ahead. That's what the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you. You just go on ahead and get into the spirit that you feel here. Right. In the Holy Ghost, in praise and in worship, yeah. He wants you to sing to Him. Amen. He wants you to hold your hands up and say, Daddy, I just need you to hold me. If not just for an hour, I miss you. Let me be close to you. Get close to your Father's neck. Smell the fragrance of His cologne. Allow Him to be close to you and to hold you as we sing in worship and praise. Amen. 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 I believe that you feel what I feel as well. Uh, dear Elder, could you come bless us with worship and song? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. This, uh, Amen. Start with number eleven. Try to choose a few ones that I think are Pastor Baca's some of his favorites, and he will tell us if they're not. I think I know him well enough to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let's see that one. Let's sing this one. Thank you. God is good. Amen. 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 All the time. All the time. Amen. Amen. Every so often, do you ever feel like, God, where are you? Mm. Come on. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's not that you don't doubt that He's around you. Where'd you go? I'm trying hard as I know how, and it's just not happening. I'm trying to think right and trying to do right and trying to act right. And, and those are times you just need to relax and just start praising Him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sacrifice of praise is not that we're just so happy. Let's praise God. Sacrifice, sacrifice of praise is I don't really feel good, but I'm going right. to praise God anyway. Amen. Amen. Praise you. Sacrifice of God means I'm not feeling the best I need to be. Yes. I'm not where I want to be, but I know He is worthy. I'm going to give it up for my God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There's a wind blowing. I feel it too. All across this land. It's a phrase.
glory, glory, glory. you that's not a rumor. <laughs> there are many things that get us addicted in life. Let's see number seven. But uh, Jesus is the addiction. Amen. The best addiction. Best addiction. No hangover. It's not like other addictions when you chase the high. He wants to be caught. Amen. <laughs> He'll better every time. Amen. 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 Everybody say family. Can we say family? Family. family. You can relax and do what you want. Relax in Jesus' name. Relax in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Lift your hands. Cry, laugh, sing, shout. Be off key. Amen. God doesn't care. Praise God. My little kids, they come into the house from time to time. My grandchildren, they'll sing. And they don't sound good at all, but it makes my heart happy. Yes. Grandpa, listen to me. And I do. Amen. Jesus is saying, come on, I want to hear you guys. Yes. Hallelujah. Angels, back up. This is my children's time. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to say, I'm going to sing, and everybody says, Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to sing. Hallelujah. I'm going to shine. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing. Yes, Lord. Redeemed. We right. are. 
Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We are the redeemed. This is the song of the redeemed, and I think it's the same chapter. It says that the angels in heaven they scratch their holy heads, trying to figure out what is it that made Jesus die for Pastor Bucket. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. For Jr. Because they don't know. They're, they worship God 24-7 in the temple. And they're bowing down. They're singing all the time. And Jesus does not live inside the angels, but He does live inside them. Yeah. And they're, so they don't understand. What does it mean to live in this world with the Holy Father that created the heavens and the earth on the inside of these people that God sent His Son to die for? Yeah. And we sing the song and the angels can't get it, but they watch our expression and they oh, read yes, us they very do. well. They've been watching us since we were born. Right. Man, look at that Pastor Mark. Right. Look at him. He's in love with the King. What must that be like to be rescued from sin and brought into the glory? Right? Right? Oh, man. Hallelujah. I love him Jesus. Amen. 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 love him Jesus. And he loves us. He loves us. Right. He does. We will sing a new song. We will sing a new song. We will sing a new song. A new song to the
a sweet spirit in here this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Yes, Jesus, Lord. thank you. Your testimony, Amen. brother, I appreciate it. It's powerful. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Moments yes. like that give us strength. Yes. Make the power of the gospel take form. Amen. That's the real word of God right there. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. It's a real deal, man. Family gets to share their hearts. Glory.
and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Holiness. send people to hell and expect them to find heaven and it don't work mm -mm. how about we how about we show them heaven and hope that they hope that they'll be drawn to it desire Amen. what we're going to do is we're going to i'm going to i'm, I'm going to uh torture brother baka here today <laughs> my my dear brother in arms uh, he I, I i would ask him uh I would ask him, what song would you request of me, brother? And he would say, none. So that's why I'm going to sing him a song. <laughs> and if you kind of hold him down and torture him, we'll do, we'll do communion. We'll let uh, Pastor Baca lead us in, 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 in communion today. And we might hear from him. I have a, I have a short word that I, would like to, uh, that, that I would like to give to my brother in, in his departure. Uh, and then we'll do a little ceremony for him. We're going to lay hands on you. Hallelujah. Anoint you with oil and bid you Godspeed and allow the congregation to uh, say anything if they'd like to say something. And uh, and I won't I won't I won't spoil the rest. Amen. 
Uh, it does include white robes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's sing this, <laughs> sing this acapella to you, brother. And uh, I can say this. I, I, I have known uh, Pastor Baca for many years. We have been... You know, you know when someone's your best friend when you get in a fight and you still love each other. Amen. And we have been in some fights. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember we were out in the tank farm one day and it was real slow and we're and I just got on his nerves and he was getting on my nerves and and we just started to swing, bang, bang, and we were scoring points. Like, oh, you know, good old boy style. And uh, I, I was I was very skinny back then. I was like a buck. Buck sixty, but I could throw I could throw five gallon cans, and so I dropped down to one knee, hooked his leg, grabbed his arm, and picked him up, because he was beating me like a drum. I, I, what can I do? I was just getting peppered, you know. So then, so I threw him on the ground, and we just locked back up, and and uh, man, we've been. Picked you up from your legs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right. He had me by my legs, and he was spinning me around, and I'm like, oh, no, Jesus. <laughs> Let me go, and I just go skidding across the ground. We, 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 I remember one time we were uh, somebody had uh, Lord have mercy. Somebody, somebody. I won't tell you about the application, but let's just say they plugged up the uh, toilets real good. Oh my I don't want to tell the kids how they did it because it's dastardly. Uh, but anyway, they plugged the toilet up, and uh, so as our station, as uh, past our, our preachers and our high and lofty state in the church that we went to, it was then our job to dislodge such obstruction in the toilet. And uh, the only, you know, the sad part is with toilets, you only know that they're not working when somebody does their business in there. And so, uh, oh, it was full. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, let's just call it a double decker. <laughs> <laughs> so then they went in there and they they took the plunger and they and they proceeded to make <laughs> what we call poop soup. Yeah. <laughs> it was poop soup, what it was, and it was awful nasty and smelly. And so him and I are in there and we realize the only way to do this is we're going to have to they ladle out the soup, mm. take it to the other latrine, and yeah. And, 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 and so by the time that we were done to dissemble this toilet, we were we were just covered. It was it was oh, terrible. It was terrible. And so we got to arguing and we're frustrated and mad. And so there we are, just like wrestling in the stall, just fighting and wrestling and all this stuff. And 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 we realized that there was just stuff all over the ground and we were just wallowing in it. And, and that's what we get for being so carnal. Um, but we, we have been brothers in arms. We have together, we have knocked on every single door in Kingman, Arizona. Yeah. Every single door, every single apartment building, we have knocked on at least once, uh, trying to do what we thought was right, trying to get people to come to church. Whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent, I don't know. All I know is it was just a desire, a passion. Chemo was with us most of the time, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we dressed up as clowns together. I should have brought some pictures. We, we dressed up as clowns together. Mm -hmm. And uh, made made fools of ourselves for the kingdom of God and for yeah. his, his little precious baby children, and did puppet shows and and and, uh, and just been into all sorts of things together. And one day, uh, him and I went to our uh, uh, pastor to talk to him about what God has been talking to us about. And our pastor did not want to hear it from us. Right. And uh, Pastor Baca had left church about a week before I did. I was at camp with the youth group. And I came home and I called I called my pastor. I said, hey, pastor, uh, Brother Baca is here with me. We'd like to come and have a com conference with you if you don't mind. And when we showed up, I, I truly believe that our pastor thought that I was here to drag you back right. to, to the church, to drag you back, and that I had convinced you somehow. And, uh, and, and, and so we began to tell him that wasn't necessarily what we were there to talk about. We wanted to talk about... The, the doctrine in which he was preaching and how we felt about that and, and what it meant and, and, and the direction we wanted to go and he wasn't really and and, and, and the, the, the the most important moment um, that happened wasn't when he was yelling and screaming at us he, he, he told us he goes he goes I am a Levite and the tithes are mine I mean that was that was amazing right he screamed that in calico I, he, he screamed it as loud as he could. <clears throat> but that was not the that was not when the, the that was not the uh, the apex of the meeting. The apex of the meeting was when uh, 
pastor uh, looked at us and I looked at him and I said, do you truly believe? Because see, at this point he had thought that he had caused enough division between me and Brother Baca, which he was apt to do. He was trying yeah. to, he was having backroom meetings with us and different things to dislodge us from each other. I, I don't know why he felt threatened by us being friends. Um, but he didn't realize you can break friends, but you can't break brothers apart. No matter how hard you try, you know, you, it's like the old saying, you know, look, I, I'll, I, I can beat my brother, but don't you dare, because then we're going we, to have problems. Um, blood and so, thicker than water. Yeah, blood is thicker than water. And so we were on the outs with each other, but we still deeply loved each other. We were brethren. And uh, we had started to talk about this doctrine and, and the ideas and the implication of Pentecost and all these different things. And uh, I, told, I told my pastor, I said, do you really believe that one brother does something that the other doesn't know about? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that Brother Bob would leave without me knowing? Mm. Do you really believe that, that we would have this conference without us having talked? Do you, do, you, do you believe this is all spur of the moment? Why would you believe that we are brothers? There's nothing that he would do that he wouldn't tell me about and vice versa. And, and to me, that was very a vital uh, point mm. that had to be made. And so about six years ago, coming up in July, right. Um, we stepped out on faith and, and, and we, we started a church that God had laid on our hearts because it was vital that I didn't, we weren't going to Pentecost anymore. That was not going to happen. But, but we did not feel like we should stay out of church. We felt compelled in the Holy Ghost to, right. to not only, to not only uh, start a church, but don't start a church the same way that we were running from. Right. Otherwise, you shouldn't start a church. You should just go to those churches. So, you know, get over yourself. You're a Christian. Don't be easily offended. But we see all these people start all these different churches. Paul said plainly, he says, I don't build on Christ on another man's foundation. But we felt like this foundation wasn't wasn't laid until I met Pastor Mark Morgan, which was a which was an amazing thing when, when Brother Bach and I met uh, our pastor. Mm -hmm. um, and so we began the process in which you start a church and you begin to do these these things. And it, it was never it was never uh, in our minds that it was going to be easy. Never. Not once time. As a matter of fact, the, the conversation came up, and Brother Baca, with his discernment, we were we were talking, and I told the people that helped us start the church initially. I said, I think Kimo was there, if I'm not mistaken. I said, this will be the most difficult thing we've ever tried to do in our lives. And this one brother stood up in self righteousness, and he said, Oh no, young preacher, you just don't understand. If we do it right, it'll be easy. And I said, brother, I said, brother, that's why it's going to be hard because we're going to do it right. Right. Mm -hmm. it's going to be, you know, yeah. to tell. I'm not going to govern you. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost govern you. That's hard to let that let that go. I'm not going to tell you what to dress. I'm going to let God tell you what to dress. I ain't going to bother with that. And so, brother Bacchus stood up and he said, No, brother. He said, Many of us aren't going to make it to the new church. And he said, You're going to be the first to leave. And he goes, Oh no, I'm with you guys. I'm here. I'm with you guys. He never came once. once. Maybe one service? Once. <laughs> we were told, my wife was sat down and told, you're going to divorce your husband right now. It's called, it's called Pentecostal prostitution. That's what I call it. Which is, I'm the one with the money, right? I pay the tithes. If I'm not coming to church, that means I don't have the tithes. So divorce him because he's reprobate and he's denied the faith. And then go get another man with more money and then bring him in and sit him down. And then we can get, and I call that Pentecostal prostitution. They wanted her to divorce me, and the pastor told her, that Scott and Diego, I give them two months, and they're done. Two months, and they're done. My wife said, really? She said, she came home and she told me, because he's given you two months, I give him one year and two months. I give, I give, I give the pastor one year and two months because he made that judgment against you. She said, if, and what she had told the pastor is, if you really think that my husband and his brother Diego are going to just quit. You've never known them. You've never known anything about them if you believe that. And, and, and one year, yeah, yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to just start something to drop it. One year and two months later, one year and two months later to the day, our pastor left town because of whatever reason he wanted to do. And so we have been, um, we have been through thick and thin. We've been through up and down. We've been through in and out, brother. Yeah. And I believe that this is just another uh, another chapter mm -hmm. in a story in which um, in which God has blessed us to start something that that is a thousand percent in the servitude and in the spirit of Christ. Yes, yeah, so amen. amen. That's our goal. So I'm gonna sing this song a cappella. Amen. 
Something in your eyes I see Reminds me of what used to be When I was still uncertain Of the truth A sleepless nights that turn to days Alone inside an empty maze Just counting on someone To see me through And if there's one thing I know You were never left alone Cause you could always call on Jesus' name and if there's one thing I pray, it's Jesus helps you find a way to make a change and listen to your heart. God will take away your pain if you choose to let it go. If there's one thing I know, well, how can I convince your heart? His light can find you in the dark, and only He can make your blind eyes see. For if we speak of lost things found, or lives that have been turned around, then tell me who knows better, child, than me? Cause if there's one thing I know, you were never left alone, you could always call on Jesus' name. And if there's one thing I pray, it's Jesus help you find a way to make a change and listen to your heart. God will take away your pain if you choose to let it go. If there's one thing I know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's begin this service in earnest. Would you uh, do us the honor and privilege, dear pastor, to lead us in the Lord's Supper? Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good to be in God's house. Amen. 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 And every time I come to God's house, I'm so excited. Every time I get a chance to be on the platform, I'm excited. I always do the same thing. I always shout out with a happy voice and give God praise to be in God's house. Amen. 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 And we have Jesus. prayer. Very important part of the service. Most important. It shows that our mission that we know that God is the only great provider and that He is the only answer to everything that we need. Yeah. Not just yes. for ourselves, but for those that we petition God for. Amen. Instead. Amen. 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 And we have worship service, which is the second most important thing because it breaks down your preconceived ambitions when you come to the house of God and allows you to let go of everything that's out there, hopefully, and you break through and get in touch and tune with God. And God loves that. He loves to know that you're hurting, but you're still singing the song in pain. Amen. And he stops all of heaven. And all the angels have to move out of his way because he wants to know who's singing to him. Yes. Amen? Yes, mm -hmm. praise God. And now we come to the third most important part of the service. The preaching is most last, yeah. but it's very important for your, for your spirit to nurture, nurture you, to help you grow, to give you reproof, to give you edification, and to give you strength and growth. Amen? Amen. But this is a part of the service is totally, completely, selfishly for Jesus and you. Amen. 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 It's Jesus time. Amen. I'm going to be going away that I may go to a land and prepare it for Jesus. I have no, no preconceived ideas that it's not going to be rough. It's going to be rough, right? Out there is something that we call the mystery, and I'm going to jump into it. I'm going to jump into the abyss. I'm not going to stop loving. I'm going to stop serving God. I'm just going to move on to another land. And God said that everywhere I put my foot, He's going to bless. Hallelujah. So, with that being, look out, because I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming with all my attitude, with all my strength, and with all yes. my weaknesses, and with all everything that I have in me. Which they're going to have a great time getting to know me. Amen? Amen. Because if I may say so, I'm a very interesting person. 
Interesting is correct. I would say that that's yes. a very co correct <laughs> description. <laughs> very interesting person to me. Thank you, Keith. But right now, I just want to tell God that I love him. That I really, truly do have a greater relationship and understanding of the sacrifice. Yes. That I sometimes, when I close my eyes and I read the story and I envision it in my heart, that maybe I am Peter. Maybe I am James. Maybe I am one of the apostles sitting at the table. Maybe I am there. They followed him through the wilderness and went from town to town, laying on his chest at times, holding him and kissing him and loving him. Maybe I am the one that he washed my feet. Yeah. to love me and to, to give me humility Amen. and to shame my pride that I didn't do that for my Lord, but He did it to me first. Yes. And when He got to that room that night and when they settled down and they had a dinner, and it was always a big thing. Dinner was always a big thing, especially with family. And if you notice in the description, they were having dinner together in that room yeah. and talking and conversating. And I wonder when Jesus was watching. As all the brethren were talking about their day and their journey and the long trip and how it was hot or it was cold or it was dusty or it was windy and oh, how good this food tastes tonight and this soft wine to wash it down tastes good tonight after a long journey and a long teaching and a long preaching. And Jesus stopped everything. And he grabbed a piece of bread. And the Bible says that he prayed over it and blessed it. Yeah. And broke it and everybody turned. See, because Jesus was a man like you and I. Mm -hmm. But not like you and I. He had the Spirit of God. And everything that was in him was in him. And when he began to do something, they would always stop and wonder, what's Jesus doing? Yeah, amen. What's Jesus doing? What's Jesus doing? And he broke it and he said, Here, take some of this. Every one of you, eat of it. For this is my body that is broken for this mankind. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you, we Jesus. take this unleavened bread in remembrance of you to remind ourselves that we are part of you and you are part of us and that you did something that we were unable to do until you did that. Sacrifice ourselves for total, complete strangers. To sacrifice ourselves for a greater good. To sacrifice ourselves for people that are unworthy. That's what you did for us. Oh Lord, I am shameful. I am filthy. I, I am like filthy rags. But thou broke thy body for me. Nor bless this. Never let me forget your sacrifice. Never let me forget that you are my best and greatest friend. In Jesus' name. Jesus take us away. Amen. Now I don't know about you, but I sat at some tables and I talked with some amazing preachers in my life. Yeah. But that would have tripped me out. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it would. That would have. That would have. <laughs> I would have kind of started making the wheels roll around because not yet had the Holy Ghost been poured out. These were right. just natural men. Right. They had a belief greater than what we have. We have the Holy Ghost. They didn't even have the Holy Ghost. Right. They had blind true faith true faith and I imagine I'll be sitting there what's this all about? Flesh. flesh bread, flesh, broken body what's it called? and while they were conversating you know, what's he, talking? he took a glass <laughs> and poured some wine and it wasn't over 
you come to Jesus, I will have feel again. Yeah. He said a prayer and he blessed and he said, This is represents my blood. My blood. See, first it was his body. Now it's his blood. Because the life is in the blood. That's right. Yeah. He said, This represents my blood that I pour out for all of you, for all mankind. Amen. This is the only thing, the only symbolism, the only symbolic thing that we can take and to remember our Lord on that day because three days later He rose. But on the way there, He was beaten badly. And He spilled all His blood. That we may be clean. Amen. That we may be victorious. That we may be overcome. That we may partake of heavenly places and Heavenly things. Think it not strange that you have a relationship with God and God wants to know you. Because He died for you. Just for you. Yes. For this day. For this hour. For this minute. And if you walk away from the Lord... For years to come, and you have a family, and you raise your children, years and years you don't talk to the Lord. He's still going to be like a prodigal father. Yeah. Still standing and waiting and looking for you. Because it's been preordained that He poured out His blood for you. Just for you. Just for you and all your seed. All of them. All of them. Every one of them, from the greatest to the least, they are all saved because of you. And he blessed it. He said a prayer. And he said, All of you take of this, drink of this. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless this. Let it nourish our body, even as your word nourishes our spirit. Wash us clean and make us whole. And Lord, if we have any transgression against anyone, Lord, I pray that you would forgive us and that you would give us the strength and the fortitude to forgive them as you forgive us. Yes. I love you with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. Everything that is in within me, God, is all because of you. Lord, I love you. Bless this and keep us in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Take it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.